Our area's most beautiful properties deserve the finest realtors. Meeks Realty Group. We focus on buying and selling residential and commercial properties throughout the tri-state area. Contact Meeks Realty Group online at meeks.us or call 304-440-1101. The views and opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of 580 WCHS, its employees, or WVRC Media. From the studios of WVRC Media, the country, the United States of America, the state, West Virginia, the city, Charleston, this is the Dave Allen Show on 580 Live. And your host. What we've got here is failure to communicate. He's kind of a big deal. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Dave Allen. Hey, folks, good Tuesday morning to you from the Parmar Store Studio. Welcome to the show. Ryan Nicholson is our producer today. Bigly, Piggly, Wiggly, Hotline 304-345-5858. Fruit Pharmacy Text 304-935-5008. The Dave Allen Show on 580 Live brought to you by Thornhill Auto Group, including the all-new Thornhill Toyota on the Thornhill Motor Mile, US 119 in Chamberville, where the grand opening celebration continues. Visit in person on US 119 in Chamberville or online thornhilltoyotawv.com. And we do the show from the Parmar Store Studio. Parmar and Game Changer present the annual Parmar Shootout on the campus of West Virginia State University, February the 5th through the 8th. Four big days, eight exciting boys and girls basketball games each day. First games tip off at 9.30 a.m. Complete list of games uh, and schedules available at Parmar Stores on Facebook or X. And if there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Welcome to the first show of 2024. Hope everyone had a great New Year's holiday. It's all over now. All the fun stuff, the parties, back to the grind. Uh, and by the end of the week, all those New Year's resolutions that you made probably are going to be gone. Statistically, that's uh, that's what it uh, that's what it shows. Um, I will say this. At the end of the year, you tend to get a little bit nostalgic, I guess, looking back. So what I did, New Year's Eve, I took the time to go back over the year 2023 in pictures, different guests, whatnot, from the year, posted them on Dave Allen Radio and Facebook. So if you're really bored today, head over to the uh, Facebook page, Dave Allen Radio, take a look at some of the pics snapped over the last year. And uh, Well, if your New Year's resolution was to step away from social media, then don't do that, I guess, till the <laughs> end of the week. Uh, but... Uh, also, I do want to mention this. Uh, today is not a state holiday. However, if you're planning to do any business with a governmental entity, you may want to wait till tomorrow. It's not a state or federal holiday. There's still a lot of closures today. The Kanawha County Courthouse, for example, is closed today, as is Charleston City Hall. The kids, teachers, and staffs of the public schools in Kanawha County are coming back tomorrow. So just so you know, now that we've got all that taken care of, let's welcome in Greg Thomas. Good morning, sir. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Thanks for having me. Have a good uh, holiday season. We did. We did. Didn't uh, just kind of stayed around here. Went up. And went up to uh, from the northern Panhandle. So we went up there for a couple of days uh, over New Year's and just got back yesterday and uh, I heard good. You know, family stuff, kid stuff. Any resolutions for you? Uh, I know. You know, la- last year I last year I like made a bunch of sort of I'm getting older and I need to get healthier sort of changes that I. Like I'm good about sticking to like for a certain amount of time, mm-hmm. and then I get busy at work, and then I get away from it, and then I, you know, so and then and then twelve o'clock rolls around. <laughs> well, I, 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 it's somebody really says I, let's go to lunch. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty. Uh, I'm actually pretty good about the working out stuff. I, the the diet stuff is what I'm. I'm yeah. I'll do really well for a couple of weeks, and then you know I'm busy, and you know a week or two, and next thing I know I'm way off track, and then mm-hmm. I got to bring it back, and so I have like certain routine like certain things that i do that make me feel better keep me on track and for the most part i do them but not always yeah so just I my, so my reunions always like or you know at the beginning of the year i'm like i've just got to stay you know i know i'm not going to be perfect about it but mm-hmm. can i just do better than i did last year yeah little little steps little yeah. steps. now i'm like you as far as being somebody when you're as busy as as what i am and, and what you are it's not always easy to you know chop up carrots and celery <laughs> <laughs> and, and and it's so much easier to say i'm hungry it's lunchtime i have five minutes yeah. let's go to wendy's or whatever yeah. whatever the but case i do feel be. so much better yeah i did a, i did like a healthy like, kind of cleanse thing one time and uh-huh. i felt so really? oh my gosh i felt so much better i lost hmm. weight i felt better i had more energy 
It's just the sticking to it. Sticking it's, to it. It's, it's the hard. hardest part. Hard. Yeah. And our and our culture, you know, you've been around here long enough, you know, you know, our, our culture lends itself to eating. And Millie Snyder and I from the Shape Shop talk about that all the time. It's like, oh, yeah. it's like, oh, well, let's get together for lunch. Or, you know, you go over to my grandparents' house and, you know, when I was a kid and it's like, hey, here, here's a piece of cake. Let's talk about stuff. That's yeah. that time. Yeah. I want to get uh, to it. Uh, you're, of course, affiliated, Greg, with the group West Virginia Citizens Against Lawsuit Abu- uh, Abuse. Your group issued a press release within the uh, last couple of days criticizing Attorney General and gubernatorial candidate Patrick Morrissey. Um, let's get to the overall view here before getting sp- specific. Why yeah. the press release and what was contained in well, it? Well, what, what um, our organization has had a long-held policy sort of view, um, and this actually dates all the way back to when Daryl McGraw was the attorney general. And, and our group actually put out a report very similar to the report we just put out in 2007 um, that was sort of critical of the way Daryl McGraw handled hiring outside counsel. So essentially, the state attorney general can hire outside counsel to go sue people, sue entities, sue businesses, do whatever, and they hire them under these like contingency fee things, right? So it's like, hey, you go sue this, you know, person, and you make, you know, you get your thirty percent cut or whatever it is. Um, and McGraw was really bad about it. He he literally just went and hired his campaign contributors. Um, they would go out, they'd sue somebody for a hundred million bucks and they'd get $33 million. Right. And so we, we put out this big report all the way back in 2007, um, which you can view on our website. Uh, we re- we used to have it up there forever and then we actually took it down for some reason, but we just, we reposted it given that we did another, d- another one. And so this was a big issue back when, when, uh, Morrissey ran for attorney general back in 2012. This was like one of the things was like, we're going to have this reform. We're not going to do this anymore. And so the legislature actually passed a law. It was called TPAC. Was like uh, transparency in you know private attorney contracts or something like that. Um, and uh, so what it did was it essentially you know brought some transparency to that process, made it a bidding process, uh, and it set out like you know kind of a. You know, if the if the lawsuit's up to twenty five million, you pay them X percent. If it's up to fifty million, you pay them Y percent or whatever. And so we put that into place, um, and that has really that has helped, but it hasn't stopped it, right? And and the and we were working on redoing this report because McGraw or um, you know Morrissey actually, you know, we kind of we saw these lawsuits coming up, but there was never there was never sort of a place to have them. Um, where you kind of could see them all in the same place and add all the, the numbers up. And so we did that. We put together a report that essentially says, hey, here's here's all of the times that the attorney general's office under Patrick Morrissey has hired outside counsel. Here's the lawsuits he's been involved in. Here's how much the lawyers have been paid. Um, and the numbers are really, really big. And so uh, we were working on this before that opioid settlement came out. And if you mm-hmm. remember, we, we came on and talked about that. Where of the billion dollar uh, opioid settlement, uh, you know, private attorneys got uh, 141 million dollars is what they made off of that, um, and which we just thought was an egregious, really excessive amount of money. Uh, but it's not been limited to just that lawsuit. There's there's been dozens of other ones. Uh, we put together a report, um, and we're going to take this report to the legislature and say, hey, look, you know, we we made you know five six years ago we passed something that made this better. But it's not fixed all the way yet, and we need to we need to address it and make some additional changes. Greg Thomas from West Virginia Citizens Good Lawsuit uh, Lawsuit Abuse is here. Going back to that release, and you threw out the name uh, Daryl McGraw. Um, now, with all due respect uh, to to McGraw and the McGraw family, to to compare a Republican Attorney General mm-hmm. Patrick Morsey in some ways to Daryl McGraw in Republican circles. That's about the same as talking about somebody's mama. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, you do realize again, with all due respect to to the McGraw family, but it's uh, I, well, and that's sort of the point here, though, right? It's like, look, this isn't, you know, and as you know, I do, you know, I do a lot of Republican politics, and and but West Virginia Citizens Against Lawsuit Abuse is a nonpartisan organization. This isn't a partisan thing. This isn't a political thing. This is we were against abusing these types of lawsuits before, and we still are. Uh, the problem is, McGra- you know, Morrissey sort of campaigned on saying that he was going to sort of fix this, and it's gotten worse, not better. Um, and the, you know, there's a, you know, the, the, 
And look, we're, I understand, and this, you know, this is kind of the same thing we talked about when when the opioid settlement came out and that hundred and forty one million dollars that went to a lo- lawyers. It's not that I don't think these guys do work, right? Like we understand that they do work. I, you know, some of these guys are really, really good lawyers. Like, uh, I'm not even saying that they don't deserve millions of dollars, but one hundred and forty one million dollars. <laughs> And then, you know, we've got a handful of these other lawsuits out here where he's paid him another fifty three million dollars. I mean, so, you know, do, do the, there's a handful of lawyers that have been paid two hundred million dollars to file lawsuits on behalf of state and state and local county and municipalities in the last 10 years. That's a lot of money. You know what I mean? That's a lot of money. And I mean, we're not talking about this is going to five hundred lawyers. It's going to like ten. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we just think it needs to be revisited. We think that there's things that can be done. Um, you know, one of the biggest things we want to do, and actually, you know, I'll, to, to Morrissey's credit, he he does. Sup- one of the things we want to do is the 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 old restrictions we put on the attorney general's office. We want to put those on uh, cities and counties. And actually, Morrissey does support that stance. Uh, so we, we appreciate that, and we hope that that's something that we can work on together and, and get done during the session. So your issue, Greg, from what I'm gathering, your issue is not necessarily with lawsuits. It, it's more with the amount yeah, it's, th- that the attorneys are being paid. Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, and, and I think what people – I think the thing to understand here, right, if you went down – okay, let's say – you know, you, you you slip fall in a parking lot or something, right? And you sue somebody. The lawyers they come in, they might make thirty thirty five percent, but like they're 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 doing all the work. They found you. They've got they're doing the work. They got to go get all the evidence, all the things, and file the paperwork. They're doing all the stuff on behalf of you. When you're doing this on behalf of the state, it, it's not all on them, right? Like I mean, yet yeah, they're still doing the work, but you're doing it on behalf of the state. The the likelihood that the state is going to get money out of the lawsuit is much, much greater than some just private person or entity. And so I think we just need to review whether it's, you know, should we have the, I mean, I think the, a basic question should be, should we have the contingency fee arrangement at all in these lawsuits? Cause should we do it hourly? You know, is there another way to do this where we're not paying lawyers $141 million that could have gone to people that need, that, that need the money, you know, to, to, uh, you know, this that was out of the opioid settlement. I mean, should they go to treatment programs? Should they go to building a facility? Whatever. You know, it's just it's just so much money, um, and these are mo- these are public funds, right? I mean, this is money that's coming back that's part of the public funds. Uh, you know, so I, I just think there needs to be better oversight of it. I think I just think we need to, you know, two hundred. I mean, if we were talking about two hundred million dollars in some other government agency that we were paying out to somebody, there'd be all ki- there'd be all kinds of audits and reviews and everything. There's nothing here other than me, us. <laughs> you know, I mean, if we don't bring this up, nobody brings it up. We'll just lay this out there. Um, you're not a you're not a fan, uh, Greg, uh, at all of Patrick Morrissey, as you've said on the show in the past. What specifically is there an issue? I know this is kind of a different event, but is there a specific? Is there heat? Is there beef between you and Morrissey? I, I, look, I think it's just over. I, look, I've I've been involved in the conservative cause in West Virginia since uh, you know I, I I actually lived in Virginia for a little bit, worked in D.C. Um, after college, and, and moved back here in two thousand and two. I've just I've been involved in the Republican cause here. Um, and most people just sort of, you know, are part of that team. They find their role. They do their stuff. Um, and and I, look, Morrissey's just been his own person that does his own thing. Uh, he's not part of the team. It's just, you know, it, it's it's always about him, right? It's always about him. It's always advancing his career, whatever he's got to do. Um, and I think, look, I think that's what this that's what this right here is about, too, right? I mean, I think... When he wanted to get elected in 2012, he was against all this stuff. This was terrible. We're going to reform it. We're going to do all this stuff. And then he comes out and he pays the lawyers the maximum amount allowed by law, which, which, by the way, he didn't restrict. The legislature passed a law to restrict how much they could get paid. Right. Like he didn't do that. I mean, he, he wants to go out and say, oh, you know, I cut these great deals. He didn't cut any deals. He paid. There, there is a pay scale and it says you can only pay them up to this much. And he paid them the maximum amount every time. Is paying somebody the maximum amount you're allowed to pay them a great deal right, yeah, for taxpayers? Yeah, right. Of course it isn't. You know, so I think that's just what it is. I mean, it's not, look, it's nothing personal. Um, you know, look, I could I say good, you know, 
look, Morrissey has done a good job in suing the federal government and those kind of things. Like that, that really has been something he's done a pretty good job of. Uh, but this end of it, um, he's been worse than McGraw, you know, and and that's just a reality. I mean, this isn't anything to do with him as a candidate or him as a person. As the attorney general, he has he has paid hundreds of millions of dollars out to personal injury lawyers. Um, and that's far more than what McGraw ever did. And that's what we're pointing out. But before we go to break, because I know I'll get a text about this uh, and I'll give you an opportunity to throw it out there again. Are you supporting Greg or on the payroll for any other candidates? Oh, no, no. Look, I'd I'd vote for anybody running for governor other than Morrissey. Anybody but Morrissey is who I would vote for. Doesn't get more plain than that. Uh, 922, the Dave Allen Show on 580 Live is brought to you part by Pinnacle Consultants, the only accredited commercial lab in West Virginia for asbestos and mold. Asbestos was banned in some building products, but it isn't banned for all products of the U.S. Do not expose your family or workers to asbestos, mold, or lead paint. Get with Pinnacle Consultants. They offer real estate environmental assessments for hazardous materials and air quality. Visit PinnacleCorp.net because what you don't know can hurt you. Text to the Dave Allen Show on 580 Live presented by Fruit Pharmacy. Shop locally. Shop Fruit Pharmacy, your hometown pharmacy for 71 years and our phone calls to the show and service a bigly piggly wiggly when shopping at your bigly piggly wiggly be sure to join their loyalty program you can say big at the gas pumps and throughout the store with their electronic coupons to free gifts on fridays just for stopping by for farm to table bigly piggly wiggly the best kept secret in charleston more with greg thomas coming up after this on the voice of charleston wchs Are you looking for a technical job in the medical field? Generations is growing and looking to add on job trained physical therapy techs to our rehab team. To apply, visit one of our seven convenient locations or simply click on us at generationspt.com. West Virginia's top high school basketball talent will come together February the 5th through the 8th on the campus of West Virginia State University as Game Changer and Parmar Stores present the Parmar Shootout. The shootout has been extended to four full days this year. Come see the top boys and girls teams in the state battle it out. 32 games in all. The first game step off at 9.30 each morning. Game Changer and Parmar Stores present the Parmar Shootout on the campus of West Virginia State University February 5th through the 8th. For a complete list of games, visit Parmar Stores on Facebook and X. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Bigly Piggly Wiggly on Spring Street has served three generations of shoppers since 1955 as the largest locally owned independent grocery store in the area. The Joe Joseph family owners grew up here, so you know they're invested in the community. They provide the biggest variety of choice meats, the freshest produce, an in-house deli bakery, great wine selection, and more of your favorite brands. Every purchase gives you gasoline points so you can save at our pumps. Order online for pickup at BigglyPigglyWiggly.com. Bigly Piggly Wiggly on Spring Street. No one beats the pig. You still thinking job change in the new year? Yeah, I need something that's in high demand and more stable in this economy. IT? Yeah, cybersecurity, maybe even AI. That's what I I did. Really? How? Went to my computer career. You don't need any prior experience, and you could start your new career in a matter of months. A lot of IT pros go to school there, too, to level up. Sweet. Are classes online or on campus? Both. Wow, I'll check it out. Thanks. Make this your year. Take the free career evaluation now at mycomputercareer.edu. Financial aid is available for qualified students, including the GI Bill. Nine twenty-five. Dave Allen Show and Five Eighty Live brought to you part by Bridge Valley. Are you interested in improving your company's IT workforce? Well, did you know that Bridge Valley offers custom tailored IT training to bridge the skills gap? In Bridge Valley, you can train for little or no cost with a fifty-fifty salary match. Bridge Valley can also supply skilled graduates and apprenticeships for your company. Visit bridgevalley.edu/apprenticeships for more information. Bigly Piggly Wiggly Hotline three zero four three four five fifty eight fifty eight. The text line for fruit three zero four nine three five five zero zero eight. Greg Thomas from West Virginia Citizens Against Lawsuit Abuse here text says would greg vote for steve williams over morrissey uh no i wouldn't vote for a democrat <laughs> you, i mean that <laughs> you said because what you said was going to break you said that you would support any other republican running yeah, except anybody, for morrissey yeah, but now this text is saying would you go as far as to vote for steve williams nah, the democrat no nah, i wouldn't vote for a democrat i mean i'd vote for um i mean i still have to sleep you know what i mean i gotta go to bed like i can't just stay up and think about it um I don't know. You know, uh, I mean, look, I didn't vote for Morrissey in that uh, U.S. Senate race in 2018. I voted for whoever the libertarian was in the Mm -hmm. fall. You know what I mean? So um, and usually, you know, the libertarians put somebody up. You know, you could have somebody for, you know, I don't know if the Constitution folks are going to have, you know, get the Marshall Wilson or one of those guys on. But, you know, I'd probably 
I mean, I'd support Marshall Wilson ahead of, uh, ahead of Morrissey for sure. Texas never thought I would agree with Greg Thomas on anything, but the fact that Morrissey is an out-of-state opportunist who wants to rule West Virginia is a well-known fact. I'm just surprised to see a Republican agree with that. <laughs> Uh, well, that's the thing about just being principled, right? <laughs> you can't, you know, uh, I can come in here and, uh, you know, I mean, most often I'm partisan because I believe that the the local, the West Virginian party and the things we've done at the Capitol have, have kind of been, uh, you know, I do think it's the most conservative legislature in the country and I support those, um, you know, most of the policies that they enact. Uh, but look, when somebody goes out and, and like I said during the thing, I mean, you know, it's not that I don't mean, you know, Morrissey, you know, the the West Virginia versus EPA. I mean, that you know, there's some big time things that have come out of that office that have been very helpful. Uh, I just think it's important to to highlight the things that have not gone well uh, and the things that we could improve upon. And, and now's a good time. I mean, look, the reason that we did this report now um, is because we want to make some changes before we have. We're going to have a new attorney general, One right? Way or so, the other, yeah. so you know, let's you know, we're going to have a new attorney general. Can we make some adjustments as this new attorney general comes in and and, and really revisit how we handle this situation and just make sure that it's it's done better than than what it has been? Texas, when the state hires lawyers on the contingency, the lawyers absorb the expense. Uh, I, that is the case. My point, though, and, and that's why I'm saying it's it's not that I don't think these guys should get paid. It's not that I'll, it's not that I don't think they should get paid a, a pretty healthy sum. Uh, it's just is that arrangement the best case? It, is that arrangement the best use of funds for the taxpayers? Right. I mean, it, you know, could could we go out and have? Could we go out and hire somebody hourly that could also bring in? You know handle this stuff that we don't have to do on a contingency mm-hmm. fee thing. Um, you know, we, we have a little bit of that pay scale in there, but it only went up to a certain dollar figure. And all of a sudden we ended up in a billion dollar settlement. So mm-hmm. the numbers just got, that's what made those numbers get really, really big was the, the, the bit, the billion dollars was so big. So, um, you know, look, I, I just think if you, if you went out and you actually made these guys that were involved in this lawsuit, like say, keep an app keep a log of how much time they spent hourly they're getting paid a huge sum out you know what i mean like that number hourly would be enormous right i'm and and i and the other point of that is just the risk is so far less when you're suing somebody on behalf of the state if you're just suing somebody as just a private class action and i th- and i just think that has to be taken into account is our is our point all right so the polls have shown that patrick morrissey is well in the lead in the race for governor although it's still early keep in mind the filing period mm-hmm. isn't officially even here yet you think the others can make up ground uh I, yeah look i think anybody could win that race i don't think there's um uh I mean, morrissey obviously is in the lead right now um Morsi's run statewide sev- multiple times. Something to be said for that. Um, you know, his name ID is significantly higher than everybody else. And that's really part of the problem. I mean, that, that's why I think the others can win. I mean, for Morrissey to have a 90 percent name ID, but only be at like 25, 28 percent of the vote. That means there's a whole bunch of people that know him that aren't choosing to vote for him. And they're saying, hey, I'm either going to pick somebody else or I'm reserving my right to pick somebody else in the future. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, look, you know, I think, you know, Mac, uh, uh, Mac doesn't have the financial resources and his campaign's not going to have the financial resources of the others, but Mac does a pretty good job of getting himself out there, right? He's got his, he's got his veteran base. Especially in the last um, month or so following oh, the debate in Morgan. Yeah. You know, he, he, he does a good job of things like that. People understand he's a conservative, uh, obviously more capito and, you know, the whole family stuff and, and, and more as a young, energetic guy. He's been he's been working hard. He's been doing a good job on the campaign trail. Um, he's certainly in the mix. And then you've got Chris Miller, who's sort of this outsider candidate that is still behind in the polls, mm-hmm. but he has the most money and he has the ability to put more money in. Yeah, he's um, not even started spending it he's yet. He's not really. started spending it yet, which, you know, people know I'm I'm in uh, people know I'm buddies with Chris and. Like, I, you know, I, <laughs> if I were managing that, I would have spent some money in the fall. Uh, their, you know, their strategy has been different. Um, but, I, you know, I think <laughs> there's a point when it'll be too late for Chris. You know what I mean? I don't know when that is. You know, I don't I don't think he's I don't think he's past the too late point. I just don't know when that is. I, you know, March 1st would definitely be that. Yeah. February 1st may be too late. You know what I mean? So I think it's a matter of, you know, when does he get going? Um, and then I, th- I think you're going to see pretty early with Chris, though. I mean, I think once he does start spending the money, um, 
you're either going to see that, you know, people were either going to like that outsidery candidate, business guy, young, energetic person, uh, or it's not going to catch. Right. And so I think you'll know, you know, I don't think this is going to be one of those things where, you know, it's like May 1st and we're going, oh, my gosh, who's going, you know, is can Chris win? I think you're going to know March 1st whether Chris can win or right. not because yeah. it's either gone his this advertising will either have started and caught on or it hasn't. Uh, so and and look, and the reality is if, you know, if Chris's media doesn't catch on and if, if you know, more can't find a way to do that or Matt can't find enough earned media to sort of stay in the mix on this, if the other guys can't get there, you know, Morrissey ha- has a ceiling. But his ceiling is high enough to win. You know what I mean? So, like, he has enough built-in name ID to where even if he doesn't get that many more votes, if the other guys come up short, you know, Morrissey can certainly, you know, certainly is in a position to win the race. Uh, for the record, just so I can be as transparent as possible, going back to Morrissey, we'll move on to something else. I don't want to find myself in the crosshairs of citizens that gets lost to abuse, so I want to make sure I'm transparent as well. I had about a 30-minute conversation with A.G. Morrissey last week. He called me um, in the early afternoon hour, just after we had the little impromptu reporters roundtable, if you will, with our uh, Brad McElhenney and Stephen Allen Adams of Ogden Newspapers. Now, he took issue with some of the things that were said on the show, and that certainly is his right. We had a very civil, gentleman-like conversation, uh, conversation for about 30 minutes uh, talking about his issues with the, with the press and his decision not to appear at the debate in Morgantown with Hoppy last month. Um, and we talked about the other, you know, uh, uh, the, the other candidates uh, as, as well. Um, and we talked about the initial polls for governor. That seemed to be his b- big bone of contention. Mistakes were made in the polling, which have been well documented. And I did invite him on the show uh, as early as uh, I think the last conversation, the last text I sent him was on Friday. I told him, check his calendar, get back with me, which he said he would. Um, and he's got an open slot uh, on the show as a candidate uh, for governor anytime that he wants. So I don't want people to think we're just ganging up on Patrick Morris. Here. He's more than welcome to come on the show, as is any candidate uh, for any office. He's chosen not to do that so far, but I just wanted to uh, wanted to kind of get that uh, out there. Now, before, a couple of things before we let you go, uh, Greg, I, I want to um, get your take on this. Uh, all these you know political rumors going around, and what happens is a lot of times, sometimes people will start their own rumors within, and you know this, within a campaign, they'll start rumors about the other campaign just to kind of get people talking. I'm sure you've heard him as I have, and it has to do with Congressman Alex Mooney, that he may drop out of the race for U.S. Senate. What are you hearing there? He's absolutely not doing that. I mean, I think that's obviously something that's, you know, sort of uh, put on by the other side to say, but no, Mooney's Yeah, that's, what I, that's kind of what I was yeah, getting no, at. Mooney's 100% going to run. I mean, I, look, do I think he's got a great chance right now? Certainly not. Um, you know, which isn't something I, you know, as, as I've said on this show and other shows, I mean, even back in the spring, I thought Mooney should have had a chance. I, I think he didn't have a very good summer. He didn't make up the ground he needed to. He didn't raise the money he needed to. And now I just think he's in a really tough spot. Um, but no, I think he's going to finish through with this and, um, you know, he's going to run. And if he does, I mean, look, not everybody has to be in office forever, right? Like all these people, it's like, what's going to, you know, there's a lot of people that sort of make this up or out move, right? It's like, Hey, I've been doing, and, and honestly, I, you see it a lot for people that have been doing it about 10 years, which guess what? He's been doing it about 10 years, right? So, so you, you, you see this a lot at that 10 year mark where it's like, I'm either going to make a move and I'm going to get this promotion and I'm going to do this new job. Or I'm just going to go do something else, Mm -hmm. you know, and and I and I certainly think that's where Mooney's at. I just I think he's in a position, you know, he he lives out there in that eastern panhandle. That's close enough to, you know, he could work for some conservative. He could go work for Club for Growth, right? Like Mm -hmm. they're spending all this money. I mean, he could go work for a conservative group like that or some other conservative group in D.C. and drive down from the eastern panhandle. Um, So I think there's just a lot of I think there'll be a lot of options available to him. Uh, and I, and I, and I'm sure that's what he's looking at, right? It's like, well, I've been in Congress, I've done this stuff, you know, I'm sure he had sort of a checklist of things that he wanted to get done. He's probably done with it. And now it's like, where do I go from here? And so, um, no, he's 100% going to run. Um, I mean, I've talked to him personally, I've talked to his, you know, now former campaign manager and others. And, um, you know, I, I just think it's, you know, he, he's definitely going to run, uh, for Senate, and we're going to have that election. And it's look, it's going to get more competitive than it is now. Um, I don't know how much more competitive, but uh, but you know that that race will get a little bit closer, and um, you know as, as more and more people pay attention to it. But um, but no, he's going to run. 
But Dave Allen, Show on 580 Live, brought to you part by General Hardware and Lumber of Winfield. Come check out the new contractor showroom, Lumber Yard, and more. They deliver service and quality right to your door. Don't buy it till you get a quote from General Hardware and Lumber of Winfield. All right, let's talk about uh, Alex Mooney's opponent, and that's uh, Governor uh, Jim Justice. Oh, uh, Brad's got a, I'm going to get into this a little later on if I can, but Brad's got a story posted on the website. There's a hearing tomorrow uh, in court in uh, Virginia on the infamous helicopter, uh, copter <laughs> gate, if you will. Uh All these things keep coming up, almost like with Trump. All these things just keep coming up and keep coming up. And the people, you know, again, it's a lot can happen between now and May, but the people just don't seem to care. Governor Justice just keeps rolling along, man. I I think it is. I think it's just so complicated. I mean, I'm I'm some, you know, obviously, like I'm I'm involved in this in these sort of, you know, I, I work in politics for a living. I'm, you know, work with the governor's office on with clients of mine and do different stuff. I mean, I know all these people personally, not, not that I'm, I don't know the governor very well personally, but I mean, all the, a lot of people around him, I know personally. If I don't really understand, like I I couldn't sit here and describe all of this stuff in detail and like make a map for you and show you what it all means. Um, I just don't have any idea how somebody that like has a real life and does real stuff would be able to follow this. I mean, it it's it's really difficult and it's complicated. And I think the other the flip side, I mean, the other aspect of it too is, you know, it, here's the problem. And and look, I'm somebody that would have probably really supported a more conservative candidate like Mooney before, right? I think the problem that that campaign had was, you know, Governor Justice started out as a Democrat. Um, even when he switched parties, he still really wasn't with us on policy stuff. And then there was a point where all of a sudden he really started working with the Republican legislature and getting things done. And, and, and so if you look at the governor's record over the last five years, it has been very conservative. And, and I think that's the, you know, so look, is he, is he, you know, they pure conservative and you know you want to go back and look at something he said six years ago and say see i told you mm-hmm. I, okay I, that, that's certainly a point and you can do that and you can feel better about it but for the average person that that doesn't play gotcha politics and just looks at it and says hey what have you done in the last year or two that has impacted my life and the reality is the governor has been working with the Republican legislature on passing the most conservative agenda policy agenda in the country. Um, and and so I think that's what people look at now. You know, look, I'm not saying that I have no idea about this financial situation. And, you know, I th- it would have to be something really drastic that people saw. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, it would have to be. The, you know, got to rip ba- off an orphanage or something. Bankruptcy, <laughs> but it would I, honestly. I, I think it'd have to be. It'd have to be something with the Greenbrier, right? Because that's something people mm-hmm. see. Yeah. You know what I mean? The coal mines are out of my, the coal mines are out of sight. The farms that he has everywhere and all this other property, it's all somewhere else. The Greenbrier is the most visible thing he has. Mm-hmm. To me, that's got to be the thing that, like, if something happened with the Greenbrier. That might be something that the actual public could could get their arms at least, at least they can understand it. Yeah, I guess yeah because that's saying. the thing that's visible. All this other stuff is this bank and that bank and this loan and it's a hundred million and it's ten million and it's a bill. I, I, who knows? Mm-hmm. You know, they're all just numbers. Um, but the Greenbrier is the tangible thing that I think people can understand. Uh, but I, look, at the end of the day, his approval is really high. Um, you know, he's been working with the Republican legislature. Um, you know, and I, I just think he's, you know, in a pretty good position to be the next U.S. Senator. Tech says some Democrat in Greg's childhood must have not bought him ice cream and Greg still holds a grudge. Greg, how could you waste your vote on a libertarian uh, or Morrissey as much as you trashed him? I think that's kind of in reference to they said, would you support Steve Williams over Morrissey? Oh, I mean, so you're, you're Republican no matter what or can, or, or libertarian. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess if there was like a super awesome Democrat for some office that I like, I mean, I just I can't think of any off the top. Well, of my Steve head. Williams is not the worst no, possible. Dude, I, I He's not Stephen Smith. OK, no, 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 no. And, and I I just a Democrat's not going to win. though. No, I, mean, I, I agree. So the, the Democrat's not going to win. So it doesn't really matter. You know, if you're going to just I mean, to me, voting for the Democrat be throwing your vote away. All right, let me ask you this because we got to go. Senator Manchin is beginning his nationwide tour searching for the middle 
or the truth <laughs> or whatever. Uh, thoughts there on his world tour? I, look, he he nationwide re- tour. He really wants to run for president, but his only way he can run for president is if he gets that nomination from the No Labels Party because they have been doing all the legwork on getting making sure they're on ballots all over the country. So mm-hmm. he's either going to get the nomina- the, the nomination from No Labels. Uh, and be their standard bearer for president on the ballot in all these states that they've gotten on, uh, or he isn't. And if he doesn't get that, uh, there's no pathway because it is. Imp- I mean, it is really difficult to get on the ballot in all these states. I mean, no labels. The no, uh, no labels organization has been working on it for years. Mm-hmm. You know, so he's either going to be able to benefit from all the work they've done on getting on these ballots or not. And if he doesn't, he doesn't. You know, if if he gets the no labels, he runs for president. If he doesn't, he doesn't run for president. 30 seconds. Session starts next week. Anything in particular you'll be keeping your eyes on? Uh, I, look, I, I think that we're sort of at this place, right, where you're, you're about to have a new governor. You're about to have all these new, you know, uh, uh, many new legislators. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of people that just have their sort of their wish list over the last four or five years, that things that they haven't gotten done that they're going to get done. Uh, because you're you're going to have a new governor and you're going to have a ton of new priorities next time around. So I think you're just going to see a lot of people sort of, you know, whatever meat was left on the bone, they're going to be taken care of here in the next uh, next 60 days. Greg Thomas, uh, give us the website for West Virginia Citizens Against Lawsuit Abuse. Uh, West Virginia Citizens Against Lawsuit Abuse dot org. OK, go check it out. Greg, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show, man. Thanks a lot. Hey, thanks for the opportunity. Dave. 18 minutes away from Tim, the Dave Allen Show and 580 Live brought to you part by Meeks Realty Group. Discover the unrivaled expertise of Meeks, your ultimate partners in all things real estate, whether it's your dream home or that ideal commercial space. Meeks has you covered. Contact Rich the Realtor 3. 3- 304-932-7488. Let Rich and the team guide you on your real estate journey. Take a look at all their listings at meeks.us. We're back after this on The Voice of Charleston, WCHS. Brought to you by the Eric J. Tar Family Businesses. Eric J. Tar Family Businesses live to make life better for you and your family. Hey, it's Sydney welcoming you to the new Thornhill Toyota. Nestled in the heart of the Thornhill Motor Mile, where the magic of the holidays meets the thrill of Toyota Thon. Whether you're dashing through the snow or cruising to Mama's house, Toyota Thon at Thornhill Toyota has something for everyone. Unwrap incredible savings, special financing, and the joy of driving a brand new Toyota. Make this season merrier with us at Thornhill Toyota. Let's go play. With Toyota Thon and Thornhill. Shop Thornhill Toyota WV.com and on the road to total savings, US 119 Chapmanville. See Thornhill for all details. West Virginia's top high school basketball talent will come together February the 5th through the 8th on the campus of West Virginia State University as Game Changer and Parmar Stores present the Parmar Shootout. The shootout has been extended to four full days this year. Come see the top boys and girls teams in the state battle it out. 32 games in all. The first games tip off at 9.30 each morning. Game Changer and Parmar Stores present the Parmar Shootout on the campus of West Virginia State University February 5th through the 8th. For a complete list of games, visit Parmar Stores on Facebook and X. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Are you fascinated by the unexplained? Then you need to tune in to the award-winning program Weird Darkness on 580 WCHS. Hosted by Darren Millar, named as one of the best storytellers in podcasting, Weird Darkness brings you the best in lore, crime, paranormal, and unexplained stories, like unsolved mysteries with a dash of In Search Of. If you love a good mystery, Weird Darkness is the show for you. Tune in and join the millions of listeners who are hooked on the eerie and unexplained. Welcome, weirdos. Weird Darkness, Sunday nights at 11 on 580 WCHS. Attention animal lovers. Animals Today covers everything related to animals worldwide. Unlike other programs that solely focus on pets, Animals Today explores a wide range of topics concerning all animals, including those in agriculture and in the wild. Host Lori and Dr. Peter Spiegel interview animal protectors and rescuers, filmmakers and authors from around the globe. If you're an animal enthusiast, Animals Today is the show for you. Sunday nights at 10 on 580 WCHS. Fifteen minutes away from ten. Bigly, Piggly, Wiggly. Hotline three zero four three four five fifty eight fifty eight. Fruit Pharmacy text three zero four nine three five five zero zero eight. Special Olympics embodies the true spirit of sportsmanship. It's not merely about winning medals. It's about being a part of a team, practicing and competing together. The joy and fulfillment derived from these experiences are immeasurable as athletes find their confidence and self worth through the shared pursuit of victory. West Virginia enriched in collaboration with Huntington invites you to witness the transformative power of Special Olympics. See a video highlight. 
highlight of the Special Olympics at Facebook.com slash 580 WCHS. Miggly Piggly Wiggly Hotline 304-345-5850 at Fruit Pharmacy Text 304-935-5008. Uh, a couple things uh, I wanted to uh, mention uh, here. Um, with the new year comes new laws uh, taking effect. One of those has to do with your car's inspection sticker. It's now every two years. And again, may have forgotten about that. That was passed by the legislature last year, but now that goes into effect, was signed into law by the governor. So uh, starting today, your uh, car's inspection sticker is now every two years. Uh, as far, And I mentioned earlier at the top of the program that uh, as far as the state governmental offices go, it is not a state holiday today. However, some governmental entities are closed. Uh, in Kanawha County, the courthouse is closed today. Um, and uh, also the city hall is closed today. So they are uh, not here. They're not there. <laughs> they're not here. If they're not there. They're not anywhere. They're closed today. Kanawha County schools also were closed today. They head back tomorrow. There was school, however, in Putnam County. I know this because what used to, during the holiday break, take me five minutes or so getting from my house uh, to the uh, interstate was back up to about 15 minutes this morning because, you know, parents and grandparents do not let their kids, heaven forbid, get on a school bus. But that's another story for uh, another uh, another day. I want to welcome aboard um, a new sponsor to this here little radio show this morning. It is the law firm of Morgan & Morgan. Welcome aboard to those folks. Uh, Morgan & Morgan, if you're injured, hire Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. They are a new sponsor to the show. So uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Text says there's a rumor that Mac Warner's ideas come to him after he eats paint chips. I got a texter that is fascinated for some reason with saying that Mac Warner eats paint chips. I work for Mac Warner for four years, I can tell you, I saw him eat a lot of things. Okay, he's a military guy, you know, so overseas, I'm sure he ate a lot of weird things. Pink chimp's not one of them. Just just uh, throwing that uh, out there. Uh, Texas Greg Thomas is the Joe Flacco of mediocre Republicans. <laughs> hey, I, let me just say this. You know, I'm an NFL fan. Uh, all due respect to Mr. Flacco. I don't know how that necessarily compares to Greg Thomas, but I will say Browns are just – killing it right now it's a great story so my for my good friends amanda Barron and sean meyer and jim workman uh and my brother-in-law ron congratulations because the browns have had a pretty good season now where it's going to go from here i don't know i guess we'll uh we'll wait and see uh jeff and carrie have been talking about this throughout the morning uh hurricane city council will meet tonight and they will be allowing public comment on a proposed water rate hike this is going on in a lot of areas right now um, and it's a pretty significant raise so if you're a customer of the water and sewer systems there uh, you have an opportunity to weigh in tonight the meeting is at 6 30 at hurricane city hall I mentioned this when I was talking to Greg earlier, the governor's helicopter. Brad has a story posted at WVMetroNews.com. There is a motion tomorrow at uh, 2 o'clock in the Western District Court of Virginia about this. Uh, Brad, again, has a whole story laid out on the website. U.S. Marshals were ordered to seize the chopper earlier of Bluestone Resources. Now, this is a company owned by the Justice Family Businesses, um, and they talking about the justice side of things, are objected to the seizure of the helicopter. It's a long story, as Greg kind of pointed out, and it's a complicated story. Read all about it online. Brad will be covering the hearings tomorrow. Um, so, and, and as a side note, I'll say this. Be ready for your television, your radio, your social media to be littered with a lot of political ads now that the new year is here. We in the business, of course, love that. Uh, the it's going to get kind of ugly, particularly, I think, in this Senate race between Governor Justice and Congressman Alex Mooney. A whole lot of negative ads are coming. Um, and Greg and I talked about this a little bit earlier this morning. I think Chris Miller uh, is about to unleash a whole lot of money trying to buy himself some more name recognition as he tries to get elected governor. It's been said about Miller that outside Charleston and the Huntington areas, there's not a lot of name recognition if you go, let's say, Morgantown, Wheeling, whatever. But if you got that kind of money, it'll buy a lot of name recognition. And I think you're about to see Chris Miller unleash the checkbook. Jeff uh, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Jenkins, that's the guy's last name, joins us in the newsroom. Jeff, uh, good morning. I know you guys are really, really busy this morning. Uh, not the way the city of Charleston wanted to start things out. Uh, shooting reported yesterday. Yeah, it was a shooting. Uh, you know, No shooting is minor, but this wasn't life-threatening injuries. It was uh, about 630 over Adam. 
Fortunately, a notorious intersection, 7th, uh, 7th Street, Park Avenue, um, and a guy was shot in the leg. Uh, and uh, they were on the scene. I've heard some emergency um, dispatcher traffic. Uh, the Charleston Fire Department medics were there really quickly. Charleston police were there really quickly. They had already uh, you know, found the suspect, found the gun. Uh, and, um, so we have, we don't have any names yet, mm-hmm. but we know the, that the wound was in the leg and they are on the scene pretty quickly. So we're hoping and we're expecting to get some names out later today from All the right. city police. What else are we keep an eye on today, Jim? Well, you know, this is, uh, you're beginning the year here. And so we've got, uh, things that are happening, uh, in state government, uh, session we, starts next week. Session starts a week from tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the much talked about DHHR is now officially in three agencies, right? Because remember, it was a split. So that official, they've been working on it. So it officially kind of starts now. January yep. starts. Um, so uh, we have that. We're following up on that today. Um, uh, Charleston City Council doesn't meet until tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so they'll have their meeting tomorrow night. And I think the mayor has told you before that her kind of state of the city address yeah, is yeah. tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. So that'll be of, that'll be of interest to see what happens with that. Um, and so we're just, you know, getting it rolling here. And you know, there was there was a good bit of news, actually, during I know a lot, a lot of people had like in between both holidays off, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. so maybe you're all just trying to catch up. Yeah. But there was I mean, there was a good bit of news during that. So I encourage you to go back and read our stories right. if you're just trying to catch up. All right, Jeff, I appreciate okay. it. Thanks a lot. It is 953, the Dave Allen Show and 580 Live brought to you by, by your hometown baseball team, the Charleston Dirty Birds. Maybe one at a time, but we're always thinking baseball over at Gomar Ballpark. The 2024 Birds schedule posted at DirtyBirdsBaseball.com. Visit their website for ticket information, promotions, team merchandise, and more. Your hometown baseball team, the Charleston Dirty Birds. Back after this and the voice of Charleston, WCHS. Brought to you by the Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses. Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses want to thank you for supporting local small businesses. Every Saturday, you're invited to join me, Chris Lawrence, here on 580 WCHS for West Virginia Outdoors. We're on the air live at 706 with hunting and fishing stories from all across the Mountain State. Interesting guests give us insight into the outdoors, game and fish management, and celebrate the enjoyment of West Virginia's two most popular activities. West Virginia Outdoors, presented by the Peyton Law Firm. And if you miss us on Saturday, catch the replay Sunday afternoon. West Virginia Outdoors, every weekend here on 580 WCHS, the voice of Charleston. Keep up with the headlines Sunday afternoon at 1 with ABC's This Week. Tune in as the award-winning ABC News team recaps the week in Washington, providing interviews with politicians and newsmakers who drive the national discussion. From elections and policy to scandals and the Oval Office, ABC News goes behind the scenes for revealing stories that clarify the top news. ABC This Week, Sunday afternoons at 1 with an encore at 8 on The Voice of Charleston, 104.5, 96.5, and 580 WCHS. Seeking stories of inspiration and resilience? Don't miss the Amazing Americans Radio Show, airing twice every Sunday on 580 WCHS. Start your day with us at 7 a.m. or wind down at 9 p.m. as we bring you uplifting sports tales of true American heroes. Hosted by Jerry Schimmel, these narratives of triumph over adversity will captivate and inspire. Be part of the journey with Amazing Americans, Sunday, 7 a.m. and 9 p.m., exclusively on The Voice of Charleston, 580 WCHS. Five away from 10. Get ready to make a difference with the WVRC Media Charleston Drop Your Socks drive through starting Thursday. We're teaming up with Thornhill Auto Group to help our neighbors in need bring new socks to our studios, 1111 Virginia Street East in Charleston. Help uh, help us warm the hearts and the feet of many of this wonder details in the coming days. From the voice of Charleston, WCHS, Texas, I want to give a huge thanks to the Republican legislature and governor for extending the car inspection to two years. I was just thinking to myself yesterday what West Virginia needs is more jalopies on the road. Uh, Tick says, I'm so sorry, but Democrats cannot actually be shocked at why so many people, including myself, have left their party and are still leaving in droves. Look at how nasty, snide, and rude many talk about those they don't agree with. They have the gall to lecture the rest of us on how tolerant they are, how accepting they are. No wonder these younger generations are as out of control when it comes to bullying, intimidation, name-calling, assault, and mob mentality. They see the power of the D in that no one is ever held accountable for their words, choices, or actions. Congratulations, Dems. You must be proud. 
Texas Dave, friendly reminder that everyone's fishing licenses in West Virginia expired yesterday. Our legislature should take notes from Ohio and other neighbors and change our fishing license to 365 days from date of purchase as it stands now. If you don't renew it today, you won't get full value on your license purchase. This discourages folks from getting the fishing license in the fall, which is peak trout season. Texas says, Dear Dave, Happy New Year, Charleston. Side note, the Mac Warner debate, it's 2024. It's not paint chips. It's now microplastics. Keep up, people, says the texture. I, I want to get this in. I was reading an article uh, over the weekend in the Wall Street Journal. It had to do with COVID and our country's response to it. Hard to believe it was around this time four years ago we started hearing reports of this mysterious new virus. Well, four years later, 3 million deaths worldwide, 1.1 million in America. And it's not gone away yet, even with vaccinations. In fact, my, my wife and I, our neighbors spent their holidays confined to their house with no visitors and barely able to get out of bed uh, due to COVID. So it's still here. Anyway, the article from the Wall Street Journal actually was an op-ed from former National Institutes of Health Chief Francis Collins. Uh, he took part in a panel discussion on the way COVID was handled in this country. And specifically, it turns out, according to him, it couldn't. It, it could have been handled a heck of a lot different than it was. Mr. Collins, and I'm paraphrasing here, said basically the reaction to COVID by our government officials, quote, totally disrupted people's lives, ruined the economy, kept many kids, et cetera, in a way uh, that they've never recovered from. It was a mistake, says Mr. Collins. Well, imagine that. Uh, he was part of all this with Dr. Fauci and others. And, and you know, I, I've said this before. I don't necessarily blame I don't necessarily blame uh, government officials. They were acting on the info that was given to them at the time. And it turns out, according to this guy, uh, who was pretty big right there along with Fauci, that it was an overreaction. And this was a guy that was at the time the head of the National Institutes of Health, the op-ed, again, over the weekend in the Wall Street Journal. Basically, what he's saying now is precautions should have been taken on the elderly and those with underlying health conditions. But for the rest of us, we should have continued with our normal lives. Now, Dr. Fauci is asking Mr. Collins to stop with the rhetoric. What rhetoric actually is that, Dr. Fauci? The truth? We are still trying to recover from the damage done by the lockdowns, and we will be for decades, and probably for the remaining 30 years or so that I have left on this earth. And again, I'm saying this not as a COVID denier. I'm not. I lost people close to me because of COVID, including one of my best friends who passed at the age of 50. I was vaccinated, boosted. But as now others are seeing the total lockdowns, shutdowns, what we did to our school system, what we did to our businesses, and... It was all pretty much shut down. And according to at least one guy who was pretty high up and was part of it, it was a mistake, as we are now learning. All right. We got to go. Ryan Nicholson, thank you so much. Also, thank you to Greg Thomas for stopping by this morning and Jeff Jenkins from the newsroom as well. Follow the news of the day, WVMetroNews.com and at WCHSNetwork.com as well. Tomorrow coming up on the show, Delegate Kayla Young will be stopping by a week away from the session, and we'll get Delegate Kayla Young's thoughts on that. Also, Rick Cavender from the Kanawha County Board of Education and Charleston Urban Works will be stopping by tomorrow as well. Thank you so much to our texters, guests, and to Ryan. I will see you tomorrow. Hoppy's next. Till then, have fun. I love somebody. WCHSAM 96.5 FM Charleston and 104.5 Cross Lanes on WVRC Media Station. We're proud to live here too.